alienated children express their feelings through artwork. When children are young, they have difficulty expressing complicated emotions because they're limited by language and maturity. However, we can better understand the experiences of children when we listen to them through their drawings and artwork. Children expressing themselves through their art appears in books published 40 to 50 years ago. Children Draw and Tell was written in 1982 and it gives samples of children expressing their places in the family through pictures. This picture is entitled, You're My Hero, Dad, and it was drawn by Sean, age eight, who was doing well in school and identifies with his father. There's some rivalry between him and his sister, and the overall impression is that this is a cohesive family with normal sibling rivalry. There are specific indicators. The placement of his self next to his father, because he likes to be close to his father. He drew his father's name in double lettering, again, indicating dad's importance in Sean's eyes, and the sister drawn with a frown and placed between the parents. The sister's drawn differently, indicating some of that sibling rivalry. This picture, I want mom and dad to like me best, was drawn by Mark. Mark's 11, sensitive, and the oldest in the family. The overall impression is that it's a happy family. He draws himself close to his parents and he likes to be near those he loves. A box separates the other family members from himself and his parents. He doesn't want them to come between him and his parents. There's a loving interaction between the parents and he's very sensitive to people's feelings about each other. In a book about children and divorce, a child psychologist discussed an illustration written by Henrik, a seven-year-old boy who was turned against his father. At a festival, Dad reenacted Christian IV, the King of Denmark. He rode a horse in a parade. Mom and Henrik were in a large crowd, and Mom said, Look, your father doesn't even say hello to you. And Henrik drew a very negative picture of Dad, the father of the horse. Intact families and typical children. Most children love to draw pictures and create other types of art. Usually, they draw pictures just for fun, but they also use drawing, coloring, and painting as ways to express their opinions and feelings. Depending upon their state of mind, children's pictures might be happy, excited, confused, poignant, or very sad. This is the front of a Mother's Day card from an 11-year-old boy. It says, I love, open the, pay, open the card, you. Dear mom, you're great. You are great, kind, and supportive. Therefore, I wanna give you back kind and support coupons. Then the back of the card, $30 for the Best Mom Award, a body potion, coupon, another. Enjoy everything, hugs and kisses. A few months later, the boy was alienated and he refused to communicate with his mother. This is a Father's Day card from an eight-year-old girl in Finland. Daddy, you're the best dad in the world. A year later, she began to be alienated. Most practitioners use estrangement to mean rejection of a parent for a good reason. In the following example, the boy had good reasons to reject both of his parents. This is a drawing of an eight-year-old boy expressing dislike for mom. He portrayed himself with a skeleton head and a werewolf body to, to express that dislike for his mother. The same eight-year-old boy expressed his dislike for his dad by portraying himself as a devil. A journal in Israel, The Arts in Psychotherapy, published an article that discussed teen true self-behavior as manifested in their self-drawings and they enumerated four categories of adolescent self-drawings. The four categories are balanced, adequate, 
which reflect positive, balanced, calm feelings. They're realistic and detailed. Detachment, which refers to emptiness, loneliness, and emotional detachment. Intensity, which has an overemphasis of body parts, for example, a large head or bolded eyes. And fourth, bizarre, aggressive sexual images or monsters and killers. A child with a good self-image with positive, balanced, calm feelings remains attracted to both parents. For example, this is a drawing by a five-year-old girl. The parents divorced and are in conflict, but the girl stays out of the conflict and remains attached to both parents. On her, on her right, the screen's left, is her dad's family, and on her left, the screen's right, is mom's family. A drawing by a different seven-year-old girl the parents are divorced and in conflict, and the child tries to remain on good terms with both parents. She writes, I love you, Daddy, and I know that you love me too. I miss you so, and I know you miss me too. A drawing by a different 12-year-old girl. The parents recently separated. The girl is trying to stay out of conflict and has an optimistic outlook. Children exhibit loyalty conflicts. A loyalty conflict is the mental state of a child who is caught between two parents who are disagreeing with each other. The child tries to feel love for both his mom and dad, but that's hard when the mom and dad are fighting with each other. A loyalty conflict creates an uncomfortable feeling that psychologists call cognitive dissonance. That simply means it's hard for a person to hold two contradictory beliefs or feelings at the same time. A young girl with a loyalty conflict was living with her father and felt that she had to express love for her mother in top secret so as not to antagonize her father. Then the same girl was prevented from seeing her mom and drew herself looking out of the window, missing her. Then the same girl who was prevented from seeing her mom wrote, let your dreams take you away. Let's look at the three stages of alienation and some examples of each. Mild. The child resists contact with the alienated parent, but enjoys their relationship once parenting time is underway. Moderate. The child strongly resists contact and is predominantly oppositional during parenting time, but there may be moments of positive contact. Severe. The child persistently and adamantly refuses contact. If forced to spend time with the alienated parent, they remain oppositional. Early or mild parental alienation. It's very uncomfortable for a child to be caught in the battleground between parents who are fighting with each other. The child may discover that it's possible to get out of the battleground by taking sides with one parent and rejecting a relationship with the other parent. The favored parent may encourage the child to fear or avoid the rejected parent. That's how parental alienation gets started. Here is a drawing by a 13-year-old girl before alienation. To dad, love. Drawn by the same girl, now age 15, after the onset of alienation. Her self-portrait is entitled I'm ugly. A nine-year-old boy draws about his feelings in early alienation. I'm running home scared and frightened. I'm feeling very alone and sad that the beautiful day turned into a roaring storm. A nine-year-old girl cut this into a wall. I hate PP, which are her mother's birth initials. She seemed fine three weeks ago. The same nine-year-old girl, I hate my female parent. Moderate level of parental alienation. This is a linoleum block print by a nine-year-old girl before she became alienated. She drew the sun and a flower. The same girl, 
age 11, has now become moderately alienated. She was studying Picasso in art class and she drew a picture with displaying internal conflict. A 13 year old boy and his moderate or severe alienation, he studied art outside of school and he drew a raging fire in a forest. Severe level of parental alienation. In cases of severe parental alienation, the child is closely attached to one parent and refuses to visit with or even talk to the rejected parent. In these cases, the child perceives the favored parent as totally good and totally perfect. And the rejected parent, evil and dangerous, the child rejects the second parent without any legitimate reason. In this picture, a child draws a picture of himself and his own parents living in a storm. His mother appears to be alienated from his half-brother and sister by their real dad. An eight-year-old girl, before alienation, to mom, love. The same girl before the alienation, I love you mom. Now the same girl, age 11, experiencing severe alienation. Go away. You don't belong in this world or house. No one has loved you. No one ever will or has loved you. A nine-year-old girl before alienation. Dear dad, there's only one person in the world to be my daddy. And that is, drum roll please, you. Love you loads. XOXO from me. The same girl, after the onset of alienation, draws a picture of beheading her father. Me, sword, you, head, unattached. Here's a drawing by a 10-year-old girl before alienation, and she's drawn an affectionate acrostic of the word mother, M-O-T-H-E-R. It starts... M, make squishy yellow sponge cake. S, it ends, special and unique in her own way. The same girl eight years later, 18, now severely alienated. I'm now 18 and therefore a legal adult. I'm foregoing any further contact with you unless absolutely ne necessary. This decision has been influenced only by my interaction with you and your behavior throughout my life. If you need more specific reasons as to why I'm ending this relationship with you, please refer to the affidavits and conclusions from the most recent court orders, and please stop trying to contact me. Before alienation, a friendly note to Aunt. She is amazing. She is my shield. After alienation, she writes a rude poem after a profanity-laced text ending and says, give me all your money or I'll break your spine. A nine-year-old alienated sister to her brother, you are a stupid little idiot that's helpless. The same nine-year-old girl isn't just rude to her brother. She hates herself. I hate my life. One child's progression through levels of alienation. In cases of alienation, it's possible to show how the child progresses through a series of steps. At first, the child's affectionate toward both parents. If the parents engage in high level of conflict, the child's caught in the middle. Then, the child gravitates to one parent in order to get out of the battle. Then, the child becomes totally enmeshed with the first parent and totally avoids a relationship with the second parent. Before alienation, a drawing by a seven-year-old girl. I love my mom and dad and my whole family. Me and my sister are BFFs. It's fun to love. Same girl. My dad left. He loves me because he left two letters. When he comes home, I'm going to jump in his arms and mom's arms. Same girl. To daddy from her, I love you. Same girl, age nine, alienation has begun. She writes to her mother, 
Today, I'm putting dishes away and helping Dean, meaning her father. Ugh, not fun. Same girl, still facing that early alienation, I knew something horrible would be in my life. For the same girl, the alienation progresses into the moderate stage, where she draws pictures, counting the days to go home to mom's house and celebrate. Four nights, three nights, two nights, one night, yay, Friday, time to go home and celebrate. The same girl making a scheme to fake illness in, in order to return to her mom's house. She writes out the plan. I'm sick. Dad asks, do you want gravel? No, I want to go home to mom's. Daddy is bossy. Love mommy, love mommy. Same girl with her sister. Both girls want to go to mom's house. I want to go home. Me too. I want to go home. Eight days is too long. And then the alienation turns to severe. This story is called He and She and the Kids. She had the kids. She gave the kids to him. The kids didn't want to go. He gave the kids back. She had the kids. She gave the kids to he. The next day, he took the kids. He got shot by a tank. The kids lived happily ever after with she, the end. The same girl, age 10, violent fantasies of dad's death. Army people here to attack. Three siblings severely alienated. Before alienation, a friendly message to mom. To mom, happy Mother's Day. Hope you have a 2002 time. Love, Harry. To mom, I love you. Get well soon and come back home. Lots of love from Charlotte. XOXO, get well, love and kisses, hugs. I hope you get well soon and come home, love Harry, XOXOXO. All sent before alienation. Then to severe alienation. The first child, ways we can kill. Off a cliff, bombing, shoot, knife, drowning black soup. The second child, I'm so angry I can kill. Third child, rip Patrick's head off. Ugly man can't look after himself without a lady like his mom or my mom. I hate him 10 out of 10. And here he is shooting Patrick with a gun. Messages to dads from severely alienated children include profanity laced tirades, this from an 11 year old boy to his father. F you, F you, F you, F you. You suck. Text message from the same 11 year old boy to his father. Dad responds, I love you and miss you, Dad. Here's text messages from a 14 year old boy to his father. You're the worst. You're an idiot. Really stupid. I hate you. You suck. You suck. Young children with parents who don't fight on front of the children draw happy artwork and celebrate both parents. A seven-year-old girl drew her family, the girls between mom and dad. In contrast, when children are being alienated by one parent against another, they can be coached to express hatred against the targeted parent and can falsely claim they never cared and never had any good memories. But their older pictures from before the parents separated can tell a completely different story. Moreover, the alienating parent might claim that the child is excelling without the target parent in his or her life. But the pictures expressed by the child can, t can tell a completely different story. If you think children aren't telling the whole story, you can look to their art to get a more complete picture. Pictures can be particularly helpful in cases of parental alienation to obtain a more complete picture of the dynamics of parental alienation.
If you want to participate in this project by contributing children's artwork, contact william.burnett at vumc.org. Written by Dr. William Burnett and produced by the Law Center. Click the link in the description portion of this video to learn more about the